Okay, we're looking at the wet cloth outlines about the calendar events that people do. Today, Good Friday. We're coming up to that time of religious celebration. And it's sorry that many saved Christians will take part on events that they don't even know. It is quite interesting that things that go on inside churches. They don't even know why they do them. They don't know the history of them. They don't know the practice, the, the origins. That's what this wet cloth uh, events are about. So what is Good Friday? Many countries observe Good Friday as a national holiday on the Friday before Easter. The day honors the crucifixion of Jesus. Some say it comes from the use of good as an adjective. Uh, Ab, ab, yeah, applied to the day, it describes the day, which in Old English cinnamon for holy, some say. So it's not verified, it's not true. Some say, adjective. You can add all kinds of adjectives, but is it true? Also, it's noteworthy that uh, confusion over the name is confirmed into most Western European and North American religions. It says Christians here. I'm tired of Christian being applied to non-Christians. Eastern Orthodox. This again it says Christian, but the only Christian there is are those who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Religion and Christianity are not the same. Called the Great and Holy Friday. Around the rest of the world it is known as Holy Friday. In most Latin nations, Great Friday, by the Slavic peoples, Friday of Morning in Germany, and Long Friday in Norway. It's observed on the Friday before Easter Sunday, or Istar Sunday, a date which may or may not coincide with the Jewish observance of Passover. So we've got already, in the book of Acts, you got, uh, it's the time of Easter, Estar. And then you got the time of the Passover, and the Gentiles are going to co-side their life with a Jewish Messiah that is not going to have action with the Jewish calendar. Problem number 1,147. It is known by several different names, including Great Friday, Holy Friday, Easter Friday, and Star Friday. The date of Good Friday varies from one year to the next, both to the Jordi Georgian calendar and Julian calendars. How many calendars we got? And then you're going to turn around and say, we're going to date something that Jesus said we never going to date, that only the Father knows, and we can't even get straight on what calendar we're using. Good Friday has recently become a national holiday in Cuba. Yay! At least for 2012. In March, Pope Benedict, Roman numerous XVI, I can't figure out, 14, paid a visit to the Caribbean nation and asked President Raul Castro to make this special day, April 6th, a public holiday. Castro reported gave the Pope his answer before the pontiff left the country. It's the first time Good Friday has been recognized by the government since religious holidays were ended in 1960. Christmas was reinstated by Pope John Paul II's visit in 1998. Oh, so the great things were bringing to Castro in the land of Cuba. I think Castro's died. We're bringing the Roman Catholic religion and the Roman Catholic ways into Cuba. It's unknown if Good Friday will remain a national holiday in Cuba after this year. In 1985, uh, this is interesting. But I haven't looked at it. So let's take it as a big interesting. Two Oxford University researchers published a paper naming April 3rd, 33 AD, as the original date of the crucifixion. Now, they did not say Good Friday. And we're going to get into the study. We're going to look at that it is not Friday, but they date April 3rd, 33 AD, as the original date of the crucifixion. The results that date from Astronomical tables, the stars, the heavens, which God said in Genesis 1 are for signs and times and seasons. Scriptural documentation. 
So they went to the Old Testament and the New Testament, I assume. And the years of Pontius Pilate's term, official government records, his term in Judea, which is 26 to 36 AD, researchers point out that all four Gospels agree with the crucifixion occurring during the Jewish festival of Passover. And from all that scripture and everything they've taken, they came up with the date April 3rd, 33 AD. That would be about 33 and a half years for Jesus. Let's see, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. That would be exactly almost three, three and a half years. You know, Jesus was probably born in September, not December. You do know that. Or you follow the, Jesus is the reason for the season. I'll tell you what I believe. Tammuz is the reason for the season. What is done on Good Friday? I, yeah. Good Friday is a day of mourning. During special Good Friday services, the church people meditate on Jesus' suffering, death on the cross, what that means to their faith. I think of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, not all the time, but often, but not often enough. And not to say, let's have a special day. And if I were to look at Isaiah 53 and look at Jesus Christ being beaten by soldiers, having his beard pulled by soldiers, by having a shroud put over his head and beat and say, who did that, Jesus? And have crown of thorns placed on his head. To have a cat of nine tails whipping his back. Where the Bible describes it as a, as a farmer tearing up his ground. The furrows. And to be nailed to that cross. And you have a nerve to call it good. You're satanic. Now the good news. Is that Jesus Christ suffered. According to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now that gospel does not go and go with his Good Friday. And we'll look at that in a moment. About three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday. We'll look into that. We'll look at the scriptures. But the good news is not that Jesus Christ suffered and died. The good news that he suffered and died according to the scriptures, which the Catholics leave out, that he died, that he was buried, and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news. The good news is my Savior is no longer going to be beaten. My Savior is no more suffering. He has come out of that grave victorious and is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's good news, not Good Friday. We'll keep moving. In some countries, there are special Good Friday processions or reenactments of the crucifixion i'm happy to say that in norwich town uh, norwich connecticut we stopped their little good friday services and their procession down the street when we used to hand them gospel tracks two years in a row we did that the third year i called up say when are you guys going to do it what time oh we're not going to do that anymore and thank God during that time, many of those people got gospel tracts about Jesus Christ. There's a little girl holding a gospel tract. I got a picture up. I've been praying for that little girl since 2007. We were able to stop it with the gospel and with gospel tracts and with the word of God. Praise God. And we even had signs. And the local newspaper took a picture and removed my head off that picture like they, like they do with John the Baptist. I think that's a great testimony. In Bermuda, it's traditional to fly kites on Good Friday. These are often handmade affairs with wooden sticks, tissue paper, glue, and string. They use wood, and the shape of the kite is intended to represent the cross. The kite flying in the sky symbolizes the accession into heaven. You mean with a string attached? They got the Jesus with a string attached. It's ridiculous. That kite does come down, 
It stays down, doesn't it? My Christ is going to come down, but he ain't going to stay down. A thousand years is going to go. He's going to judge all the nation. And we're going to remain high in glory in New Jerusalem, not high as the people in Jamaica and Bermuda. Hey, what you doing, man? Though it's not a federal holiday, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, New Jersey, North Carolina, North Dakota, and Tennessee observe a state holiday on Good Friday. Residents of these states might find some municipal services and businesses, as well as banks, will be closed. I thought banks were federal. Ooh, look into that one. The stock market will be closed on Good Friday, meaning both NASQAQ and NASQAQ, I call it NASQAQ, and the New York Stock Exchange will not be trading. Congregations around the world reenact the crucifixion on Good Friday. Like I said, we, we interrupted that in uh, uh, November, uh, November uh, Norwich. Bear with my mind, please. It takes a little while for a 68, well, 1968 model mind to keep going. In the Philippines, where Catholics favor blends with indigenous beliefs, some devotees are actually nailed to crosses each year. The Catholic Church has condemned this ritual, but not stopped it. But less gruesome reenactments are held in many countries. Like I said, we stopped one in Norwich. Including the U.S. last year groups observed Good Friday with crucifixion reenactments in Michigan, Louisiana, Florida, and other states, which we attended two of them on the outside of giving gospel tracts out and holding signs for Jesus Christ. Under the Constitution law of the protection of Sundays and public holidays, Good Friday is treated as a steely keg or a quiet holiday in Germany. Restrictions do vary from state to state of Germany, but the intention is to restrict any activities which contradict the character of the day. This means that dancing is prohibited in many states, and all non-public entertain, entertaining events outside homes may be banned in some states. Again, Germany, uh, the restriction is placed on what movies can be seen in cinemas. The FCK, the German Motion Picture Rating Systems, oversees a list of films that are as considered unsuitable, unsuitable for holiday viewing. Ooh. They only did that 365 days in a year in the cinemas of America. The churches in general. Members of many denominations, including the Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, and Methodist Reformed traditions observe Good Friday with fasting and church services. There's a lot of people involved in this mess. The Catholic Church. There's a lot of people involved with this mess. In the Roman Catholic tradition, this day is treated as a fast day. Why, does it hurry up and go? Does it go quicker than any other days? A day in which one only has one full meal and abstains from the consumption of meat. No meat on this Friday. And only one meal. As a result, many churches hold fish fries or fish Fridays where parishioners can congregate and eat their meal. Can you have seconds? <laughs> I wouldn't say it would be a fish buffet. <laughs> I do that. And a meal with fried fish is served with any number of different side items, including, but not limited to, hush puppies, cold sores, potato salad, and fries. I guess you can only have that once. Roman Catholic liturgical traditions, 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 offer no special rites between Holy Thursday and Easter Sunday. We'll repeat this again. However, there are exceptions to the rule. Yeah, <laughs> loopholes. Eastern and Western Church disagree over the calculation of the date of Easter and therefore of Good Friday. Because they got so many different calendars, they got so many traditions, they got so much. Just throw them out the window. Or just do what Jesus Christ is going to do with the organization. Just cast them off in the lake of fire that burns forever. How's that? I didn't say Catholics were lost. I said the assemblies. I said the groups. The, the main fame of the their church. The structure. Throw off in the lake of fire. Preach to the Christians. Or the churches. 
because the sacrifice of Jesus through his crucifixion is is recommend is uh, sought on this day, the divine liturgy, liturgy, however you say it, the sacrifice of bread and wine is never celebrated on Good Friday. But isn't Christ our bread and isn't he our wine upon the cross? And isn't Paul saying that the Lord's Supper was to remind us of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that he's coming again? That the fact is you're going to celebrate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and you're going to not have the bread and wine? You're not going to have the Lord's Supper on this day? You're not going to have your messy mass on this day? Wow. Ooh. Okay. Is never celebrating Great Friday except when the day comes coincides with a great feast of unexpectation or whatever. I don't want to know how to pronounce these names. Go ahead, rank on me for not pronouncing out names in regard to what the truth is. So also on Great Friday, the clergy no longer wear the purple or red that is customary throughout the Great Lent. So, wait a minute. Let me, I didn't look this up before. Let me do it now. Uh, so, they, they, they change their colors. So, let me come over here real quick. I want to check something out real quick. I apologize I didn't do this. Um, watch this. Watch this. Here we go. How did I miss this? How did I miss this? Ready? Where was I? Also on Great Friday, the clergy no longer wear the purple or red that is customary throughout the Great Lent. Revelation 17.4 And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Whoa. That's Mystery Great Babylon. That's her colors. I'm going to write that down. I got to make that note of that afterwards. How did I miss that one? Yep, see, I'm a sinner. I err. I'm not perfect. Thank you, Lord, for showing me that one. That's something not to be missed. Great and Holy Friday is served as a strict fast, also called the Black Fast. I almost couldn't say that. And then the day after Thanksgiving in America, you got the Black Friday, which means you go clean out your wallet. Where here you clean out your stomach. And adult Byzantine Christian people are, every time I see the word Christian, I'm, I'm not going to read it as Christian. I'm going to try to read it something else. Are expected to abstain from all food and drink the entire day to exempt that they're health, exempt for people with health problems. On this holy day, neither a meal is offered, nor do we eat on this day of the crucifixion. You know, funny, I think some did eat at the crucifixion, the Bible says. Uh, it may be something that just tradition, but um, if someone is, is unable or has become very old or is unable to fast, he may be given bread and water after sunset. That's still the whole day. That's a faulty loophole. In this way, we come to the holy commandment of the apostles, holy apostles not to eat on Great Friday. Chapter and verse, please. Jesus Christ, blessed hope at gmail.com. King James Bible. Any of the 66 books will do. And the Bible says out of witnesses are two or three witnesses. So I want two scripture references that the Holy Apostle said you're not to have any food or drink on Great Friday. Find me anywhere in the Bible that says Great Friday. Matter of fact, let me check something here real quick. I, I can do it right here. Hold on, hold on. Let me check. Hold on, hold on. Let me check. Okay, here we go. Ready? There's no Friday in the King James Bible. That's a lie. I just looked it up on my on my computer uh, dic dictionary and useful ministry tools of the King James Bible. There is no Friday in the Bible anywhere. The events of Good Friday are stated in the Stations of the Cross, a 14-step devotional 
often performed by Catholics during Lent, and especially on Good Friday. For this 14th step, and send 1995, we can get you into the lake of fire that burneth forever. 14 steps. What ridiculous. Mega churches have taken the 14 step. You can find 14 steps, 7 steps, 9 steps, backward steps, the goose steps, in any bookstore in the Christian section. Devoted for uh, the stations across are commonly recited on Wednesday and Fridays during Lent. Another devotion of the Acts of Reparation may also be prayed. Good Friday is a day of fasting within their church. Tradition here is no mass. Whoa, thank you. Give one day greatness. And no celebration of the Eucharist. Oh, good, thank you. I want to celebrate that mess. You know, another word, the proper word to state for the mass would be is cannibalism. As you declare from your church and your priest and your catechism that you are eating a Jewish human. Ew. You call that holy. The liturgy may be still be formed in communion if taken, comes from the host, consecrated on Holy Thursday. Baptism, penance, and anointing the sick may be performed, but only on usual circumstances. you got to have leftover Jesus from the previous day to have it on Good Friday. Church bells are silent. Altars are left bare as children wait for St. Nicholas to come. Stockings hung by the... No. In the 7th century, that church in Rome adopted a practice of adoration of the cross from the church in Jerusalem, where a fragment of the wood, believed to be Lord's cross, had been venerated every year on Good Friday since the 4th century. According to tradition, a part of the Holy Cross was discovered by the mother of Emperor Constantine, whose, whose son saw the cross in the sky, and that Jesus said, Conquer in my name, and make the mother church that is holy Babylon, that has the colors of scarlet and purple, that God says is an adulteress and a fornicator, and he'll cast judgment upon her. Oh, I, I just went away from the thing. The Emperor of St. Constantine, St. Helen. On the pilgrimage to Jerusalem, 326. Matthew 15, 3. But he answered and said unto him, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Mark 7, 9. And he said unto him, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Mark 7, 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Have you got what Jesus said? Your tradition is against God. And you ask any Catholic, any Catholic of authority in the Catholic Church. I read this in the Bible. I don't understand. What I just read in the Bible goes against the teachings of the church. And they will tell you tradition and what the Pope said is above the word of God. I've had him say it to me. Don't tell me. Tradition is above the word of God. The 5th century account describes the service in Jerusalem. A coffer <coughs> oh, wait a minute, of gold plated with silver contained the wood of the cross was brought forward. The bishop placed a relic on the table of the ch chapel of the crucifixion and the faithful approach it touching the brow and eyes and lips to the wood as the priest said as every priest has done ever since behold the wood of the cross Ephesians, uh, Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written curses everyone that hangeth on a tree that cross is a symbol of curse. Adoration or veneration of the image of the representation of Christ's cross does not mean we are actually adoring the material image, of course, but rather, but it represents. So what we are doing was we're coming up with legal terms that we may do something that the Bible tells us not to do. Mm -hmm. Exodus 20, verse 4. 
Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Leviticus twenty six three. Ye shall make no ye shall ye shall make you no idols or graven image. Acts seventeen twenty nine. For as much then as ye were offspring of God, we ought not to think that God has like to gold or silver or stone or graven. Isaiah 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. No matter what legal loopholes you do or come up with, God says no. Throw your traditions away. Get a King James Bible and study it. You will not find study in any other Bible on the market. And kneeling before the crucifix and kissing it, we are paying the highest honor in our Lord's cross as an instrument of our salvation. And in 2 Samuel 20, verse 9, Job, Joab kill, kissed Amasa, the kiss of death. Psalms 2.12, kiss the son, lest he be angry. Not his, not his cross, kiss the son. Hosea 13, 2, kiss the calves. You mean the golden calf, the golden arches. Luke 22, 47, Judas kisses Jesus. Luke 22, 48, Jesus questions Jews, have you betrayed the son of man with a kiss? Hot cross buns. The familiar hot cross buns are sweet rolls with the sign of the cross cut into it. That they are one of several traditions. I should start saying traditions. European breads marked with a cross for Good Friday. According to traditions, these buns originate St. Albans uh, Abbey. In 1361, where the monkeys, I mean the monks, gave them to poor people who came there. I thought the monks were poor people. Oh, contradiction. Each member of the family might choose a particular unpleasant job, which has been put off for a long time. Like cleaning the, gar the garage, or a closet, or scrubbing the bathroom. This is a celebration of Good Friday. <laughs> Each member of the family might choose a particular un. Uh, no, that's twice. Excuse me. All right, Protestant churches. Traditionally, this holiday considered one of the most important ones in the Lutheran traditions. Wow, how much that word comes up? All right. Again, Lutheran churches has the fast. Now we got a lot here. Much to read. I'm turn my light over here. The scriptures. The scriptures. Not tradition. This late afternoon death consists with the Passover lamb being killed between the two evenings of the Jewish teaching. The lamb was killed between 3 and 6 p.m. on the afternoon of the 14th of Abib or Nisan. And prepared because the 15th was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was an annual Sabbath observance. The first and last days of Unleavened Bread were annual Sabbath, in addition to the normal weekly Sabbath. So, Saturday is a Sabbath. Every Saturday, the seventh day. But the Passover was an additional Sabbath. And this would clear up between why Good Friday is not the day that Christ died. Leviticus 23, verses 5 through 8. In the 14th day of the first month, I, I was rushing and did kind of sloppily what, what we've already done because I want to get to the scripture part. And let me stop explaining, but this is what I want to read. Leviticus 23, verses 5 through 8. In the 14th day of the first month, at even, nighttime, is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. 
In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. They just told you to go clean your garage. But don't take part in the Mass. But take part in the Mass on Thursday. Contradiction of tradition in what the Bible. The above text confirms that the first and last days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread are annual Sabbath every year, not weekly, every year. To be observed as a day of rest in addition to the weekly Sabbath, Saturday, these days would occur on the 15th and 21st of Abed and or Nisan. as two months. The Passover meal was an important religious observance in which to remember that the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and their houses kept them alive when the angel of death passed by and that God had delivered them from slavery of Egypt. What follows the close examination of the biblical record in which Jesus was killed on the 14th of Nisan in the afternoon and the next day was the annual Sabbath, the first day of the, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Matthew 12, 38 through 40. Then certain the scribes and Pharisees answered and saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now we're coming to the trouble. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday night, Saturday night, there was no Sunday night. It can't be Good Friday. Matthew 26, 60 to 61. But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. And at last came two false witnesses saying, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. And we know the Bible says that temple was speaking about the body of Jesus, not the bricks and stone. Matthew 27, 62 to 68. Now the next day, they followed the day of the preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying, Sir, remember that deceiver said that calling Jesus a deceiver. While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher may be sure unto the third day. Least his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto him, Ye have watched. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting the watch. All right, three days. It has been common knowledge in the scriptures that that Jesus and Jesus said three days and three nights. The above verses show that Jesus had openly taught that the major sign that he was he was the Messiah was that he would die and three days rise again. Even more clearly, he said that he would be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This promise meant that 72 hours would pass from his death to his resurrection. That would be the sign for the Jews that he was the Messiah. 72 hours. Now the problem. Now the problem. How could Jesus have been in the heart of the earth three days and three nights if he died on Friday afternoon and arose before before sunrise on Sunday? Friday night, Saturday night, it can't be Sunday night. One day and two nights, Friday night, Friday night time, Saturday daytime, Saturday night time in our measures of days. And if we Added the Friday daytime, they get two periods of daytime, and even though Jesus would have died on the late afternoon of Friday. It don't come. It don't add. It's this messed up United States math that we got now. Friday crucifixion with a resurrection before sunrise on Sunday morning totals approximately 36 hours. Jesus said 72. Missing about some time. I can't add it up. 
if we understood Jesus to mean that within three days and three nights he would rise again, then any period short of that would suffice. But he taught that after three days and three nights in the heart of the earth that he would rise again. He didn't say, oh, roundabout. He didn't do rounding. He did particular. He named after three days and three nights. This logically would necessitate the crucifixion on Wednesday, then the daylight and daylight day daylight and nighttime periods of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday would be the three days and three nights. You're off the track on Good Friday. If you say Good Friday, you need to go back to your high school and give them the diploma back to them because you can't count. You gotta go back to grade school. Matt, go over and go back to kindergarten. Where you learn how to count again. One, two, three, five. Oh, I got it wrong. I got to go back and do it again. Can I have my milk and cookies? I take my nap now. Now, we only need to determine whether the annual Sabbath or the weekly Sabbath fell on the same day. Which would lead us to the conclusion that Jesus died on a Friday afternoon, shortly after 3 p.m. as commonly taught. If not... Then he died on another day to wait. So let's look at the scriptures and see if the scriptures say that Jesus died on Friday. Sound good? Let's throw tradition away and look at the scriptures. Yet churches today ignore this, this sign or try to explain it. It didn't really mean three days and three nights. They lie. They show their ignorance. First, try to do the math. Almost all Christian places, uh, I hate saying that word Christian. I'm trying to change myself. I got to change my notes to say. Most people churches teach Jesus Christ died and was buried late Good Friday afternoon. Then was raised early Easter Sunday morning. That's Friday night, Saturday day, Saturday night, Saturday night, two nights and one day. <clears throat> You're off the game show. You don't even get a, a, a departing gift. You're wrong. Even if you wanted to stretch things and call the few minutes of daylight on Friday a day, that's only two days and two nights. You come up short. Uh, if you did that with your budget and your bills, you have to pay a late fee. You'd be in deep debt. You need to hire somebody to do your budgeting. Okay, the answer. Here's the answer. You'll notice that above text in Matthew 27, record that the chief priest, and we read that, that the chief priest met with Pilate the next morning after the crucifixion to get permission to post a guard to seal the tomb. Hey, his disciples are going to come and steal that body. We got to make sure they don't do that. The Bible records that this was the day after the day of preparation. This day of the preparation is the 14th of Abed or Nisan, or Nisan, when the homes were scored for any leavened bread within the house and the preparation of food was readied for the Passover meal and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Mark 15, 42, Luke 23, 54, John 19, 14, 19, 31, and 19, 42. Therefore, the grave of Jesus was not sealed until the morning of the 15th of Abed, Nisan, on the annual Sabbath. In the text from John 19.31, we're going to look at it in a minute, we learn that the body of Jesus needed to be removed from the cross because the Sabbath was about to begin, and the Sabbath was the high day or the annual yearly Sabbath. 19.31 the Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remove, should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. This is a Sabbath day, and it's not Saturday. For the Sabbath day was a high day. This was another Sabbath day beyond the Saturday. It was possible to have another Sabbath on a week, annual. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. John 19, 39 to 40. 
And there came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus, wound it up in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews to bury. Matthew 27, 59 to 61. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out of a rock. He rolled a great stone to the door of the scepter and departed. There was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Look at all the witnesses. Joseph of Arimea, there's Nicodemus, there's Mary, there's Mary. And I think there was another Mary. Mark 15, 46 to 47. He brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen. And laid him in a sepulchre which was hewed out of a rock. And rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, behind where he beheld where he was laid. Luke 23, 54 to 56. And that day was a preparation. The Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee, following after and beheld the sepulchre, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Christ died on the Sabbath day. And yet here's another Sabbath day a couple days later. Joseph took the body after receiving permission from Pilate, brought a linen sheet, and bound the body with Nicodemus' assistance. Nicodemus had brought a hundred pounds of myrrh and aloes, which they bound with the body. The tomb was near where Jesus was crucified and belonged to Joseph who carved out the tomb of the rock. It was a new tomb that had never been used. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother Joseph accompanied the body from the cross and watched the entire process of the burial. When Jesus' body was laid in the tomb, then Joseph, assisted by Nicodemus, rolled a large stone in front of the tomb, opening and left. Finally, the two Marys left and prepared spices and perfumes before resting on the Sabbath. There's no work to be done on the Sabbath. They've gone to prepare. So between the high day Sabbath when Christ died and between the Sabbath of Saturday, Mary and the women are preparing spices. They can't do no work. You can't even light a match. The women in preparing spices and perfume, which were intended to anoint the body of Jesus, Luke 23, 56, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Luke 24, 1 through 2. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. Matthew 28, 1-4, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. John 20, verses 1-2, to In the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene early, while it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, seeing the stone rolled away. Mark 16's text tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary brought spices after the Sabbath and prepared them. While the Luke 23 text states that the women prepared spices and then rested after the Sabbath. This coincides with the annual Sabbath on Thursday, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the weekly Sabbath of Saturday. We know that these are the same women because the Bible verses relate Mary Magdalene was involved in all these events. How, however, two other Marys were mentioned, one of the mother of James and Simone, and the other the mother of Joseph, but in all cases, Mary Magdalene was involved. Therefore, the women saw Jesus' body being laid in the tomb on Wednesday afternoon, they rested on the annual Sabbath on Thursday and brought the spices on Friday and prepared the spices on Friday and rested according to the commandment on the weekly Sabbath of Saturday. After the weekly Sabbath, they attended to anoint Jesus' body with the perfume and spices Sunday morning. Therefore, both 
the evidence have proven that Passover was on Wednesday, and Jesus did as he said, which would rise again after three days and three nights. Mark 16, 9. Now when Jesus was risen first day of the week, he appeared unto Mary Magdalene. The fact is that the Last Supper celebrated with the bread and wine by Jesus and disciples took place on the evening of the fourth day of the week. We would say Tuesday evening and was not the Passover Cedar meal. meal. He was the Passover. Christ died as, as the Passover for the nation of Israel. That, 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 that meal he had with the last meal was not D. D. Conjunction, conjunction, watch your misfunction. D. Passover was Jesus Christ. The Last Supper was not the Passover night. I, I, I even got confused at that for many years. The fact is, the Last Supper was celebrated. Bread and wine with Jesus and disciples took place on the evening of the fourth day of the week. We would say Tuesday evening, not the Passover seat our meal. Jesus Christ was crucified on Wednesday and was in the grave three days and three nights. He arose from the dead late on the Sabbath. Finally, he revealed himself to Mary Magdalene and the disciples on the first day of the week, shortly after sunrise. And that's it. That's the study. That's the study of Good Friday. And when it comes down to, all right, if you want to go by tradition, you want to throw the Bible out. But you can't on Good Friday. Because the words of Jesus Christ as the testimony of Jonah, three days, three nights. No, I misquoted, didn't I? Didn't I? Yes, I did. According to Jonah and the testimony and the sign of Jonah, after three days and three nights. Good Friday does not fit. It's two days. It's not after 72 hours. And then when you look at the women preparing the spices for the burial, the ritual of, of the Jewish burying a dead body, they could not prepare that, that those spices on the next day of Good Friday because the next day according with Good Friday is the Sabbath and there is no working on the Sabbath, the seventh day. They could have been killed for working on the Sabbath. But they worked on the day before the Sabbath, a Friday. And they prepared the spices and they finished. And when it came Saturday, they rested. And when the Sabbath was over, very early, the first day of the week, Sunday, they're going with the spices to see the body of Jesus, but the body of Jesus resurrected. So I would throw the entire Good Friday out the window, in the trash can, into the lake of fire, and will burn forever. Christ did not die on Friday. It is a tradition of a church that does not follow the Bible and throws the Bible in the garbage can and keeps their tradition. While they can't even control and maintain their own priests with children. How's that for a fact, Jack? When the Bible says to forbid men to marry, it's wrong. Timothy. Paul's letter to Timothy. And Paul's letter, letter to Tiffany, T Timothy said, there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. But tradition said it's Mary. If you are in the Catholic Church, if you are in the Protestant Church, you are in a church that is vile and is wicked and practiced. There are saved Protestants and there are saved Catholics. The church organization and the structure is hellish and devilish and satanic. Not necessarily the people, but not all the people. Many will go the broad way and that leads to destruction to a religion. But few will find a gate that leads to life, to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the wet cloth on Good Friday. 